In the 1970s, Afghanistan became a focus for superpower rivalry. Close to the Persian Gulf's oil and the Indian Ocean ports, in the north, it shared a border with the Muslims of the Soviet Union's Central Asian republics. To Moscow, a friendly Afghanistan was vital. A military coup brings a left-wing regime to power. Soviet cameras portray it as a romantic, popular revolution. The Pakistanis say that between 8 and 10,000 men of the 57th Mountain Division crossed three miles into Pakistan under heavy artillery cover. From a distance, the Pakistanis say they saw Russian-built P-76 amphibious tanks belonging to two Indian tank brigades which were giving extra fire cover. At Akara railway station, one of the mainline links from the coast and the port of Chittagong, we saw evidence of some of this shelling. We also saw arms which the Pakistanis claimed to have captured during the two days of fighting. Sterling Indian-made Sten guns and submachine guns, Indian Esalon rifles, 303 rifles and piles of ammunition. And in a railway truck just outside the station we saw some of the Indian dead. Most of them were wearing new uniforms and new boots. And most of them too had the shoulder badge of the Indian 57th Mountain Brigade. India has always tried to be on the side of peace and negotiations and so on. Understand why your troops are stationed there? No, I am In order to remind people here that Indian infiltration is a reality, Indian soldiers captured last week were presented to the Pakistani and international press. We were told they belonged to the Naga Regiment and had been captured two miles inside Pakistan. We were told through a Pakistani interpreter that they were among 200 Indian troops on a search and destroy mission. And purely as an act of terror, they blew up a school house. 22 children were injured here. They have blown up 165 bridges, large and small, and have blown up a power substation. And they have committed, in Dakar alone, six political assassinations every day. In their last short war against India in September 65, Pakistan... <laughs> Afghanistan. Foreign nations had tried to conquer it for centuries. None succeeded. Would bring the people of Afghanistan a terrible toll of death and destruction. Mrs. Gandhi is assassinated. Her son takes over. Delhi's terrified Sikh community, the largest outside the Punjab. Sikh houses and temples have been torn down and set on fire. There have been reports of Sikhs being burnt alive, and Hindu mobs a hundred strong attacking women and children. They say their Hindu neighbors turned a deaf ear to their cries. Some Sikhs claim to have telephoned police stations for help again and again. But the families who've not been able to flee the city are in hiding, barricaded in their homes. Around him lie hundreds of badly injured Sikhs, victims of Hindu fury. Earlier today, when we tried to film these Sikhs, an enraged Hindu mob attacked us and seized our pictures. For Soviet troops moved up the agenda. The Afghans wanted us to introduce a limited contingent of Soviet troops. To, they just couldn't cope with the Mujahideen themselves. They kept insisting and pushing for Soviet troops. But we kept refusing and refusing and refusing. The announcement from Moscow at half past four this morning carried a shocking impact across the world. And on at least one occasion, the soldiers inside met with violent opposition. The emergency decrees had no legal force on the territory of the Russian Federation. In the news, it appears the struggle for power in the Soviet Union is by no means over.